All right, Scott Squad, we are back in the building. And of course, we got to talk about Married to Medicine. So um, I literally just watched the episode because, you know what? It'd be hard to recap two shows in one night. And I'd just be like, you know what? <laughs> Only one of y'all going to get my attention today. OK. Um, and so then what I've decided to do is now watch the, you know, the the following episode the day after so that i you know my night i hate working at night to be quite honest with y'all i hate doing anything at night any type of work i don't want to do after four or five p.m okay um but anyway let's get into the review because the girls are fighting and by the girls i mean quad and anilo which is very interesting I was wondering how this was all going to play out, given that the two had kind of had conflicting stories throughout the season. So it was interesting to see <laughs> the fallout from that. Um, I want to know in the chatterization what you guys would rate this episode of Married to Medicine. It's part two of the season nine reunion. And I'm going to actually rate this episode like a 9.5. I felt, well, I'm going to rate it a nine. And I'm going to tell you why I'm taking away a little bit of the points. Um, you know, the, the situation with uh, Dr. Heavenly and Dr. Contessa, um, there's something to me that doesn't feel as entertaining as watching... Dr. Heavenly and Mariah go at it. Okay. I'm just going to be real. Um, and I don't know why that is. Maybe it's because I never really felt like there was a real friendship there. So maybe it is that when we see two friends fall apart and we, you know, continue to hear about the demise of it. Maybe it's just a little bit too much for me. I don't know. Or maybe, and I'll get to this when we get to that point, but there are some things that I feel like that we need to discuss that have kind of been hammered over the head. And I think maybe I'm tired of discussing it. I don't know. But I did think that the quad Anila Toya stuff was very interesting. So we're going to get into all of that. And I want you guys to tell me what you rate it. What do you rate this episode on a scale of one to ten? I want to know. You know, um, how was you feeling about it? You know, I thought it was good. Don't get me wrong, but um, in a nine point what a nine a nine point five that's a good score. So anyway, let's get down to it. So and and I may make some references to previous interviews with Doctor Heavenly and with and with Quad as well. Um, because Kwa did say that she and Anila had touched on this during the reunion, but she really didn't get into how much they touched on it. So anyway, Andy starts off this segment of the reunion by asking if Anila, you know, had uh, feels that Toya had anything to do with her break in. And so, you know, Anila's like, you know, after some him and some haw and some ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ooh, ah. I mean, she's kind of like, no. OK. Um, and we also learned that she's not sleeping well after the second robbery. Quiet as it's kept, I wouldn't be sleeping well either. Quiet as it's kept, I would be moving, to be quite honest with you. Like, I don't know. You know, um, it just seems crazy that out of all the homes in the neighborhood that could be burgled twice, that it would be hers. And I might just be thinking it might be a sign. Otherwise. You know, maybe it would not. It, maybe it's probably a good idea if they don't show her house in the same way that they maybe used to show it before on the show. I really don't know how are these people getting behind behind the gates. That's what I want to know. Like, you live in this exclusive neighborhood. Like, y'all need to beef up the security or something. You need some dogs, okay? Get you some dogs because some dogs will be a great warning signal that something is awry, okay? Um. But anyway, we get a little, we get a doctor's package. They discuss, you know, um, whether or not Quad does any fillers. Andy <laughs> kind of being messy 
asked Quad, like, do you think that Anila gets fillers? And Anila's like, no comment. And I'm like, shade, okay? Um, because here's the thing. Andy's like, no comment means, I mean, it really means something. So you just kind of telling us what you think. And Anila like, no, nah, no. Nah, I mean, you know, I leave that to Kieran. Kieran can tell whether or not you had a, you know, a facelift or not or whatever like that. And I'm like, girl, <laughs> you kind of fell for the okie doke, even though you was trying not to fall for the okie doke. But it is what it is. Andy is a pro at this, so he knows how to get you, how to get you gotcha. Okay. Um, Quad, for the record, denies having any work done. No facelifts here. Okay. And it does get into women's rights and what it means for politicians to become involved in, you know, um, the rights of women and what they do with their um, bodies, uh, so to speak, because of um, just everything going on in the in the world of politics, which I try not to touch on too much on on this channel, um, because I feel like you can get that anywhere else. And I want this to be an escape. But. You know, they do touch on it, and it, it is important, and we will talk about things when we need to. Like, I mean, get out and vote if you can. But anyway, um, you know, Simone talks about, you know, it being especially tough for black women, you know, out there. And um, sometimes the, the fetus can do abnormal things that can hurt the mother, which irrespective of, any, of anyone's religion may mean that it may be more beneficial to, you know, end the uh pregnancy to save a life but um that's a topic for i feel like women to decide on their own i don't think that uh politicians should have any any say so okay in what women do with their bodies or anybody else for that matter okay because they're not trying to tell men what to do meanwhile um speaking of men we see the men get wheeled in and they're comparing their wardrobes. And then we get into the Toya's marital issues and rumors. And the first thing we see is the package of her sold home. Now she brings out some receipts about, you know, the home selling well in the neighborhood and whatnot. And woo de woo. Audra told us something different. Woo de woo. I don't really know what the situation is. All we know is that the woman has been moving and on the run <laughs> since the show first started. I hate to say on the run, but that's what it feels like. I mean, just moving and moving and moving, which it's their prerogative. Period. OK, um, I'm not judging them for it, but, you know, it is a fact that they have moved quite a bit. And so it does become a topic of conversation. And I think a lot of it stems from the previous two hundred thousand dollar, you know, tax lien. Which, you know, if you may, if you know anything about taxes, you know, listen, that's a man. I can only oof. taxes will eat you alive. Okay, they will eat you alive. Meanwhile, you know, um. We get into this idea of Toya feeling alone and she begins to cry. You know, Eugene's job has changed, but she still feels alone. OK. And so she's upset because her friends weren't supporting her. Dr. Jackie says that when she's tried to talk to Toya, Toya won't listen to them and she challenges their advice. Toya says, well, you know, you weren't here for me like I was here for you when Curtis cheated on you. And Dr. Jackie is like, you told me that Curtis cheated on me because he felt alone and I was never there for him. OK. Bottom line, what I think is personally, Dr. Jackie just don't really F with Toya like that. I don't really feel like Toya F with, like, with Dr. Jackie like that. And that's just that on that. And he says you could have called and checked up on her. Dr. Jackie says, yeah, you're right. Well, do I think anything's gonna change? Nope, I don't. Um, so Andy gets into this idea that Quad has stated a million Quad has said it's been stated a million and one times that Toya has allegedly put the badge up, cheated on the husband. Okay. Oh, 
Kwa tells us that Heavenly told her, that Simone told her that, yes, Toya is cheating, but we just had the wrong man. Simone never says that she never told Dr. Heavenly that. Dr. Heavenly never answers that question. Did Simone say that? I'm still curious. Now I want to know. Okay. Um, for those of you guys who love Dr. Heavenly's page, our boy from House of Aaron will be interviewing. Well, I'm not interviewing, but they will be recapping the episode tonight on Dr. Heavenly's YouTube channel. So maybe he will ask that question. Okay. I think that's happening at 7 p.m. All right. So um, Simone denies it. Quad says the rumor originated with a ladies' night at Anila's house, and the ladies who live in the community said that Toya had a relationship with somebody in the neighborhood. Quad then says she found out from Anila, Anila via a phone call, and Anila is like, what? Quad is like, what? My ASS? Anila says, this is some BS. Quad says she told me, and I don't lie. So then they kind of just turn on each other. OK, Kwa says she told me it's a rumor about Toya sleeping around in the neighborhood. I can't tell you everything. And then she roped Zayna in to complete the story. Poor Zayna. You know, I wonder, did she really have a part in this? You know, the way they make it seem. I do. actually. I mean, I wonder, like you have to wonder, does did she really play a part in this whole situation the way they're making it? Like, I mean, because it's it, you know, it's real easy for either Anila or Quad to say Zayna, 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 right? Because Zayna ain't really here. Um, But what's happening in this situation is somebody lying. OK. Or is, is nobody lying? I don't really know. Well, somebody got to be lying because Quad say the rumor came from Anila. Anila is claiming that she never told Quad that. So they kind of go around the mulberry bush about it. Andy asked her, asked Quad, well, why not tell Toya that there's a rumor going on? Was the intent to hurt her by keeping it going? Clearly, the answer is yes on both on both parts. Quad is probably just the person who is honest enough to admit. Yeah, girl, I heard this rumor. I said it on camera to perpetuate it, to move it around because I wanted to hurt your feelings because you was talking about me or I heard that y'all was talking about me. So now I'm coming for you. OK, whereas Anila's like, well, you know, Toya, we weren't talking at the time and she's hemming and hawing around it. You know, I can respect at least. Quad coming out and saying, like, well, I mean, you know what? Yeah, okay, I said it, okay. But Quad did tell us somebody was sleeping with the married contractor. I mean, so it won't, it won't somebody, it won't Toya sneaking and creeping in the neighborhood. Somebody was sleeping with the contractor, but it wasn't Quad, okay. And Anila say the Toya rumor did not come from her, but Quad say it did. So that's where we at with it, right? Um, Andy asked Dr. Jackie, you know, well, how would you feel if everybody was gossiping about behind your back when you was, you know, having your cheating issues with Curtis? And Jackie's like, you mean how did I feel when they was talking about me? She was like, I expected it from this group, but it didn't move me one way or another. That's smooth. Jackie's a smooth operator. But you know what Jackie has? wisdom and there's this element of grace about her at least um in terms of how she presents herself with poise okay she's not getting out of character she can't do that and it's interesting to me that she's so able to maneuver in this space without ever really having to come out of character and still manage to maneuver and swerve and get the deals and whatnot. It's that's that's fascinating to me. It what it does say is that you can be interesting enough to be on a reality TV show and really do not much of anything except work. Show up. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying she don't do nothing, but I am saying like 
what does she really do this season? <laughs> I mean, you know, she held some events, most of which I feel like benefited her practice. So she is at least a smart businesswoman. She's just not dramatic. But as everybody says, you need some balance on these shows. And so I assume she provides the much needed balance from some of the crazy that we saw in this episode. Okay. Anyway, um, here's the thing. Andy asked Toya about her and Anila's truce. She doesn't know where they stand because every time they try to get back together, you know, they end up being torn apart by something else. And now it's Anila perpetuating this rumor. So they get into it. I don't really feel like Anila is getting where, where Toya is coming from because Toya is like, you know, what if this rumor was believed by, <coughs> excuse me, by Eugene? You know, what would have happened then? It wouldn't have been fun and games then, you know? And Anila is just like, well, you know, we just weren't in a good place. But the crazy thing about this whole situation was, to me, the most interesting part was kind of seeing, you know, Quad and Anila kind of like going back and forth with each other because it kind of seemed like they just kind of turned on each other. And in my mind, honestly, what I was thinking was, y'all ain't want to work out this story before y'all, you know, I mean, got here. <laughs> I mean... It definitely provided some interesting drama. But in my mind, I'm like, yeah, if y'all keep keying and ha-ha about it, I mean, it probably would have been better to just blame Zayna. I mean, no shade, but Zayna's not here, okay, to defend herself. But the two of them turn on each other. And it really started back when Anila said, that she felt like she was set up by Quad by inviting Zayna. But Zayna never really even said the rumor. It was Dr. Heavenly that told Toya. So Zayna never got to do whatever she was supposed to do. So she kind of can get off Scott clear too. Because these two didn't come together well enough to think about think of a viable plan. <laughs> so they goes at it in the dressing room. Anila feels ganged up on. And, and Quad's like, well, I'm not going to lie. Okay. And what I feel like is Anila is not really taking any level of responsibility for this unless she really just feel like she didn't say it. I want to know in the chat who lying, who not lying. Chime down and let me know because somebody is. This rumor originated somewhere and somebody told somebody. So Anila is saying she never told Quad. Then how did Quad hear it? Did she hear it from Zayna? Because it seems to me like Anila is not willing to throw whomever she heard it from under the bus or it originated from her and she's not willing to say that it originated or I told Quad at least. Okay confusing um by the time they get back out to the couch it seems like they're kind of okay and it seems like they kind of move forward later on by like hugging and kissing but i'm still like did anila tell quad or not like anila are you gonna admit to it or i mean what are we gonna do because we still haven't found out okay Oh, we get to Dr. Heavenly and Dr. Contessa's package. Let's break this thing down into two parts because I'm tired of talking about it. Again, because it's it's not as fascinating to me because there was, some, again, I felt like there was something about Mariah and Heavenly arguing that really just, they crack they had a snap crackle and pop on the camera and i think again because these are two friends they're not really reading each other they're they're more like yet just yelling at each other you know what i'm saying i can't really explain it to you you know dr heavenly and mariah was talking about pressure washing your house okay I, I can I can fix your teeth or something like that you need dentures you know your mama stuff like that that could be funny, okay? But this ain't really funny because it really is the demise of a friendship. So let me just give it to y'all for real, for real. Um, Dr. Heavenly, to me, 
her YouTube page makes this show extra interesting. It's already interesting in and of itself, but it adds another layer of drama that they can count on to have each and every season. So to a certain degree, I kind of feel like they need to be thankful that she does it. OK, um, that's number one. Number two. You know, if I had an issue with her saying something about me on her YouTube page, then I'm calling her behind the scenes and I'm saying, girl, stop talking about me, please. OK, um, period. Right. Uh, I think the whole situation has been conflated. There's a term that's being conflated. The word dogging out. So Dr. Heavenly, Andy are using the terms. You dogged your husband out last season. Dr. Heavenly saying you called me and was dogging your husband out. Dr. Contessa is like, I never called you. I never called you or something to that effect, right? Clearly, they these two women had conversations together based on the clips and the, the social media stuff that they've shown. There was, a, there was a relationship there. Is it within the realm of possibility that Dr. Contessa was venting to Dr. Heavenly about her issues with Scott? I 100% believe that that happened, right? I think that the word dogging out can be substituted for the word venting, right? If you substitute the word venting for the word dogging for the term dogging out, you the two ladies are talking about the same thing. It's a it's a discussion of semantics at this point to me, okay? Because at the end of the season, well, throughout the season, there were ob there were obvious issues between Dr. Scott and Dr. Contessa, so much so that she had Dr. Uh, excuse me, that Quad tell us exactly what was really going on about the this, the alleged separation and whatnot. So there were issues. We saw them play out on the screen, right? So Dr. Heavenly recapping those issues and and being asked different questions, specifically about the mental abuse or whatever like that. You know, that's debatable about whether or not she should have said that or not. And if she did say it, um. Not if she said it, because we know she said it. But I think that the clue for Dr. Doctor um, Contessa should have been right then and there. I'm picking up the phone. Girl, now I'd have told you, we, you could listen. I understand you recapping and stuff like that. But that comment right there, that's, that went too far for me. OK, and so you need to either take that YouTube clip. You need to take that YouTube down right this instance or we will not be friends anymore. You got two choices, okay? Because for me, that was going too far and I don't like it. To me, that is the obligation because if you have a problem and you don't tell me, it's not my problem. It's your problem, okay? And the reason why it's your problem is because you are holding it in and you are keeping it to yourself and you are not allowing me the opportunity to fix whatever problem there is. So to me, I feel like that's where things went wrong, okay? Um... I also feel like, so that's that's one argument that I do feel like if that's how Dr. Contessa felt, that's what I felt like she should have done. But Dr. Heavenly is saying, well, no, this incident started when um, I told her on the phone when she was when she was venting, okay, venting versus dogging out. Let's use that term. When she was venting about Scott, hey girl, can I give you some advice? Dr. Dr. Contessa says yes, allegedly. Um, if you're gonna stay with your man, you look crazy. Um, for talking about him like this, which is the truth, okay? Uh, it's, it's, it is true. You're going to look crazy if you stay with him, so stop talking about him um, on, on television or stop doing anything that would put him in a negative light. Don't give us the real or nothing like that, period. I don't know. That's, it sounds like that's what she said. If that's what she said, to me, it's solid advice, okay? Um, if you want to save your marriage, this is what you need to do, Okay. And at the end of the day, all we know is that the two of them worked things out in therapy. We did not see it happen. We did not see nothing happen. So it looked like to me she took the advice. Bottom line, okay, intent, impact. Let me tell you two different things. Dr. Heavenly's intent, I feel like, was good. Was it well received? No. The impact was good. Dr. Contessa and Dr. Scott are happy as can be. Marriage is going well, okay? So despite whatever the intent was that Dr. Contessa clearly didn't appreciate, the impact is whether or not she took Dr. Heavenly's advice or not, however it occurred, she did what Dr. Heavenly said to a certain degree, it seems like. Stop talking about the marriage. They're okay. Boom. Everybody's happy. Okay? That's the end of it. To me, it goes no further than there. The two of them arguing, unless they're going to fight at this point, which we still haven't seen that. Um, I don't want to hear nothing else about it, but we ain't even seen that yet. 
Are we ever going to see it? Okay. That's what I want to know. I mean, show me some progression in 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 terms of the um in terms of the alter, uh, the the argumentation. Okay? Because you know, the two of them go, continuing to go back and forth about he Dr. Heavenly social media, when it's not going to change. She's not going to get off YouTube. She's not going to stop doing what she do. Um, I asked her about it last week. She said she's not going to stop, and I don't blame her. I wouldn't stop either because I think that anybody would personally, okay, um, I think that anybody who is on a reality TV show should be on social media recapping their shows, giving us their opinion. Not only does it add extra income, which I'm sure to Dr. Heavenly is probably minuscule in comparison to what she makes doing all of her investments or real estate and dentistry and all that kind of stuff like that or whatever, you know, Toya, whatever checks Toya was bringing in for residuals every month or payments. I don't really know what it was. But anyway, what I'm saying to you is. That just like, you know, Candy does it, just like Dr. Heavenly does it, just like um, Karen is now doing, you should be getting on your platform and promoting your show and talking about the episodes because it continues the conversation and it draws people into the show and it ultimately helps the show. Now, also, too, it helps lazy cast members. And I'm not talking about anybody in particular on this show. Don't get it twisted. It does help lazy cast members come up with story, okay, if if you say something that I, I don't like, okay? If I'm lazy and I'm and I'm like, oh, well, I, ooh, I need something to think about this season. I need something to do. Oh, that's what I'll do. Um, Then you could pick, you could piggyback off, some, off of something that they say. You ain't even got to be lazy. You could just be, that could just be, oh, that's a stroke of genius. You said this about me and I'm mad about it. Now you got something to talk about next, next season. Reality 101, okay? That's just me. That's just how I think. So I think that when these people get online and they start talking about the show, more power to it, okay? Because that live between Dr. Um, Simone, Cecil, and Toya still lives to this day, okay? And uh, again, that's what we live for when we're watching these shows, the a little bit of ancillary stuff, okay? That's how Love and Marriage Huntsville became so popular because everybody was going live. OK, whether they knew that what they were doing or not, they knew to get on live. And this is this is coming from rea reality, t relatively new reality TV stars who are coming from Huntsville, Alabama, new to hop online and go live to talk to their fans, to talk about the show and get opinions about the show. How genius is that? To me, I'm all for it. But I'm in the space, so I understand the power of creating communities because it allows people to talk to you, get to know you better and understand you and all that kind of stuff like that. Anyway, I have gone on and on about this and I didn't even intend to get worked up today. I was going to sit here and relax and have a conversation. But now that we into it, we into it. All right. I'm done talking about that because I don't have nothing else to, to give it. No more energy to give it. I wrote a whole bunch of notes, but that's all I can tell you. Um, the men come out, the women go backstage, Anila and Toya have an argumentation about this whole U-Haul joke that Kieran and Anila pulled. Basically, Eugene feels like it's not funny. You know, they moved the first time because they're the everybody's house was getting broken into. So I know maybe Atlanta is not the place. I don't know. It sounded to me like, I mean, just it's just a lot of stuff going on down there. I mean, is I mean, what is happening? What is really happening? I, I, I'm, I'm just, it, it, this sounds like a really bad situation. Meanwhile, um, Eugene tells us that, you know, they've moved, why they've moved several times. It's not funny. Kieran feels like it's funny. It hurts Eugene that Kieran does not listen to him telling him that it's hurting his feelings. And, you know, Andy asks, well, in, after you've heard that it's hurting his feelings, do you still feel like you should have been, do you still feel like this whole thing with the U-Haul was funny? Are you willing to die on that hill? And Karen basically says, yes, I still, to this day, think it's funny. But the question is, do you? <laughs>